Hi, my name is Captain Wayne Carpenter and I'm the owner of Extreme Bass Tackle Products and mostly I design tubes for the experienced bass angler. Today we're here on Lake St. Clair and it's during the post-spawn period. Post-spawn period there's a lot of things going on with the fish moving a lot. There's mayfly hatches going on, there's a lot of bait fish feeding going on and so what I've done is I've put together a kit and this is for you. Thank you very much for taking the time for this to show you the type of baits you can use during this period to get your best catch rates, your best weights. Over the course of over 20 years of bait design, I've learned quite a bit about what the smallmouth like and sometimes what they don't like. What they do like, smallmouth like small flakes. So I design a lot of small flake into my baits. Also, smallmouth like variety. So one day, one color will be working really well. The next day, another color will come along and actually beat the other color that was good the previous day. So what I've done is, especially for anybody who likes to work in the forage into their bait and their bait selection, what I've done is I've given you a lot of choices here. And if you look at the tones going across the board here, every day, bass are gonna look at these baits and say, well, I like this tone better than this tone, or this tone better than that tone. And tones are very important. You can see a wide range of them here. This is what I call a post-spawn kit, which I put together just for this. And it also include our number one color, Canadian Mist. This is all time, ever since 1999, our all time best color. It's got purple flake in it. If you're going to make a bait decision, and you say, well, I have all these baits, what other baits would I need? I would recommend to look at the flake colors. There's flake in the bait, and look at the flake colors that you don't have. You really should have purple and copper. Those are the two top flake colors for smallmouth bass, particularly on Lake St. Clair, but pretty much everywhere. If you have purple and copper, you pretty much can work the smallmouth one way or the other on every day of the week and all season long. Purple and copper are very important. However, there's some other colors to consider too. Sometimes, some people like red. If you have confidence in red, then you want your reds. Definitely want to have some greens. Blues are good to have, and so on and so forth. So when you look across, there's a tone of plastics, but there's also different flake colors. Now I focus mostly on purples here. This is sweet green, it's a tri-laminate bait, which means there's three steps to the process to make this bait, and gives us three colors. There's more of a Formula G3 color on top, You've got your Canadian mist in the tail right there. It's more of a Canadian mist light. And then you can see the green tone on the belly there, henceforth the, the name Sweet Green. It's been very effective. In fact, uh, anytime when I'm taking out clients, I will have Sweet Green on first, as well as St. Clair Gobi NFT. But also with the Sweet Green, we have a drop shot size. Now this is important because from one day to the next, color is really important. I'm a big color guy. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I can tell you all kinds of things about color and matching the hatch. But sometimes profile rules the day. Sometimes you might be getting nothing but rock bass on something that's four inch, but you throw out this little guy right here, and all of a sudden you're catching all the big smallmouth that you would want on that particular day. But come back the next day and it might be just the opposite. So every day I always go out with a drop shot on and I always go out with a tube on. Every single day that I go out because smallmouth are like that. They're kind of crazy and one day they want one thing and one day they want the next. So if you really look at this kit, we have a couple of top colors in sweet green and Canadian mist, but now let's get to our forage imitators. I call it natural forage technology is what I build into the baits. Now your St. Clair Gobi, this is an updated version. The old St. Clair Gobi did not look like this. This one's got a bit of a blue illusion on the belly. Definitely has purple flake for highlights and it's also got some hologram, small hologram flake in there. Uh, it's, it's actually a very important element. I do an entire seminar that talks about dominant colors and highlight colors. We're not gonna get into that today, but it's something you wanna think about when you look at a bait, what is the strongest color in there and what are the little highlights? So when we get to another natural forage bait, which is this Great Lakes Perch, this one was two years in the making. And we had a lot of arguments and, and conflict over how we wanted to design this bait. And it came down to, there's your dominant color, your green. There is a highlight color, your white. And also in the tail, 
there's red. Now red you'll see in the fins in the yellow perch in the Great Lakes. So you need just a touch of red in there and what that does is that helps trigger the bite. So your Great Lakes perch has been a very strong color. Uh, it's definitely a big fish color. You may not catch as many fish but the fish you catch are generally bigger on Great Lakes perch. Now what would this video be like if we didn't talk about the mayflies? And yes, I do have an insect imitator. Now this is unusual, I think, in the industry. You don't see a lot of this in the bass fishing side, uh, maybe possibly in some of the other species. You'll see a lot of insect imitators, but this is mayfly. Now when you look at mayfly, it has a shiny side. That would be the wings. And it has this belly here that is more of a cream color. Now if you're to walk to your local gas station right now, stuck all over the gas station are a bunch of mayflies. And right now, at this moment, the mayflies there, that is their dominant color. It's a cream color belly they have, the mayflies do. Well, those are the juiciest ones and those are the ones that the bass are keying on right now. And so you're looking for that mayfly bite. Now I can tell you from experience and also from people, some people who are true believers in this bait that fish it year round, they fish it wings down. So they put the shiny side down and they fish it wings down year round. So the true believers, they do that and they do really well with mayfly. So right now we've got a goby imitator, which is a bottom dweller. We've got a perch imitator, which is in the mid range level of the water column. And now we have a mayfly imitator, which you can even throw on top and let it sink if they're feeding on mayflies on the top. And let's talk about one other imitator that I recently added to the lineup, very critical to fishing on Lake St. Clair. Gizzard shad are just a huge part of the diet anymore for their smallmouth bass. I think universally you'll find out that a lot of people will tell you that the gobies just aren't as prevalent as they used to be. And there's a lot of anecdotal evidence to support that. There is some data to support it too, but most, mostly anecdotal, we're just not seeing as many. They're still out there, the gobies are. But what we see more of is smallmouth coughing up shad on the boat. When we bring them up and put them on the boat, they'll actually cough up a gizzard shad. So I designed gizzard shad. Now if you think about my designs, and we talked about small flake, you'll see small flake in this bait. Now what I added to this, just recently upgraded it, there's large white flake in this also, which tends to break up the bait and not make it look like just one color when it's in the water. So you probably can't see it here, but hopefully we'll get a close up for you or if you get a chance to look at it in the store, you will see that there's some large white flake. Gizzard shad is really important. If you see bass, well, let's put it this way. Back in the day, if you saw a bunch of fish busting the surface, the first thing we thought was white bass. Yeah, there might be some smallmouth, maybe, could be, but a lot of times we go out to those schools, we catch white bass. Nowadays, the whole system has changed and they're very highly likely that when you see fish busting the surface, those are smallmouth busting gizzard shed up to the surface. Could be emerald chiners too, we have, a, we have a bait for that as well. But nevertheless, so gizzard shad has become a very important part of the arsenal. Now real quickly, I just want to show you there's a whole design element to the whole entire product line, but this box is a good way of explaining it. This is your consistent color day in and day out. That's consistent day in and day out. That's consistent day out, day in and day out. This is big fish, okay? This is forage specific, and this is also forage specific, but also for aggressive fish. I don't throw this all day long. I could and I have, and I've done okay. But I would also reserve some colors for that special moment, where all of a sudden they're just busting the surface, Bam, gizzard shad goes out, I already have it rigged, ready to go. You know, because we're going to have more than one rod rigged, right? So I would always have a gizzard shad on, ready to go, to throw after some active fish. And in five minutes, it can make up your whole day. We go with the highest quality plastic available in the industry. If you compare our baits, the extreme bass tackle baits, to other baits in the stores, you will see the colors are brighter, they're sharper. You can see each individual color way better than most other baits. And also, if you've talked to anybody, and I please do talk to anybody who's used these baits, they will tell you they last far longer than a lot of the less expensive baits that you might find in the store. Do the other baits catch fish? Absolutely. Do they have natural forage technology? 
Probably not, because that's something I developed over a period of over 20 years. From that point forward, which color is it that's going to be the best? So let's talk about a few of the other colors. I can tell you that uh, we mentioned copper flake. This is a very strong copper flake tube. This is brown craw. Now brown craw is very popular on the west side of the state. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it anywhere you want to fish it, but anywhere you want a copper flake. Now you can see it's a laminate design. So when you start adding elements like lamination or trilamination, now you're raising the quality of the bait. And so now we've got more than one color. And I can tell you that a lot of baits that have multiple colors, the smallmouth are less likely to reject. Yes, less likely to reject. If you throw a color out there, a single color, they may not like it. If you throw a bait out there with two or three or four colors, they might actually like one of those colors. And they may not reject the bait because it has one of the colors that they like, even though the other colors aren't exactly what they're looking for. So this is part of the design process that I go through. So this is brown craw, another crayfish imitator, which is good to have. That's sand craw, another bottom dwelling crayfish type color. And this one, when I say sleeper bait, what I mean is, it's not a bait that everybody just walk up on the shelf and say, yeah, I'm gonna grab that bait, I want that bait. Because it stands out among the rest of the baits. But as far as the fish are concerned, they could want this bait more than any other bait in your tackle box. And let me explain. If you go to one of my websites, I even tell the story about the 11 year old that I gave a little kit to. And he asked me, he says, what's the best bait to throw right now, Mr. Wayne? And I said, well, why don't you go ahead and throw, and I probably told him Canadian Mist or Sinclair Gobi NFT. Did he do what I said? No. He picked Sand Craw, and he proceeded to clean our clocks. His dad and I could just sit there and watch him catch fish after fish, and all of a sudden the bells and whistles are going off. Hmm. They really like Sand Craw on the sand. So there's a couple places on Lake St. Clair this is really good. Anywhere there's sand is really good, but we find on the South Shore, I've got reports and i got a friend that tells me South Shore is really good for sand craw. So a really good option to kind of have a bait that kind of hides in plain sight, if you will. So here's one bait that could have made that tackle box there, and this is St. Clair Crayfish. It's not that I don't believe in it, it's not that it's not a good post-spawn bait, but St. Clair Crayfish just couldn't fit in the box. We didn't have seven slots, we had six. So. This one is good year round. This is actually based on a crayfish that was spit up on the boat alive. So I caught the small bass, it wasn't a big bass. He spit up a crayfish on my boat and it was alive still. And I took a picture of the crayfish and it looked exactly like this. That made my job that much easier. There's the bait, there's the forage, natural forage. Here's the bait. It was that simple, very simple year. This thing has never slowed down. This is actually good for consistency and good for big fish. Finally, and I want to mention that it's good to have a game-changing bait in hand. When you're fishing color, a lot of times you'll notice that you'll have a bunch of bass just swarming over a color. It's maybe the best color and, and you're like, yeah, you're hitting them. All of a sudden the bite will shut down. Smallmouth fishing, yeah? Right? That's what it's like. So what you need is a game-changing bait in that moment. Or on the big water like this, you could drive another 30 minutes to another spot, or you can stay on the fish that you've got. So it's always good to have some game-changing baits available. I've got one that I brought back this year in 2020, and I designed it probably back in 2001, 2002, and it's called Fire Tiger. Now Fire Tiger isn't based on any natural forage. It's not based on anything more than just saying we need a Fire Tiger bait, like Fire Tiger crank baits or jerk baits, things like this. And we didn't have one in a plastic. So when you look at extreme bass tackle baits, take a look at a design like this, Fire Tiger, and ask yourself, you know, where else are you going to find something with this much thought put into it and this much design work? Now the design work is for one purpose only. Not to catch fish every day, but sometimes when you need it and you've got five cookie cutter fish, you want a bigger fish, throw this. School shuts down, throw this. See if you can reinvigorate that school. So it's good to have game changing baits, it's good to have consistent baits, it's good to have forage 
related baits and it's good to have baits that you can just trust. So I can tell you over the years that with Extreme Bass Tackle, I have developed a product line that any bass angler who really studies and takes, her, takes the time to really think about what's out in the environment and what they want to do and what tools they want to take out there to get the job done. If you want to fish on the bottom with goby baits, crayfish baits, got them. If you want to fish in the mid-range with minnow imitators, bait fish imitators, got them. And if you want to fish on surface or something like that, we've got insect imitator too. Very rare to see an insect imitator. So Extreme Bass Tackle has a lot to offer for bass anglers who want some tools in the box when the going gets tough. Because if you've ever been smallmouth fishing, you know that day's going to come where things don't quite go according to plan. But I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to watch this. This has been a lot of fun for me because I get to tell you a little bit about my journey. Uh, there's more, but thanks for taking the time today. I think that during the post-spawn period, it's a little tough right now. And I hope that uh, something I have brought up here will help you put a few more fish in the boat. Love to hear from you. You can find these baits locally at some stores. There's the Nine Mile gas station. It's called Pit Stop. They have them. Sportsman's Direct has them over here at 16 and Jefferson roughly. Angler's Point if you're up by Selfridge. They've got my baits as well or you can go to ExtremeBassTackle.com. So thank you for giving me a little of your time. I hope something here will help you put more fish in the boat.